Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering this week and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Westwood, and I'm here today with the commentary editor, Con Carroll. And Con, dissatisfaction with Joe Biden is growing. There's, you know, a widespread expectation that he's not going to run in 2024. And this past week, you sort of ranked some of the top Democratic talent that could replace him. There are some interesting names on your list. Tell us about where you see the bench right now. Sure. So I think Biden, as the incumbent, even though his approval ratings are low, has to be on top. It's, it's up to him. Mm -hmm. now, if someone convinces to run, that, of course, changes things. But right now, I think he still has to be number one. Number two, I have someone who I think a lot of people are overlooking, and that is a uh, Democrat who is in a tough re-election. That's, that's a given in, in a red state. But if he wins, he will have run twice um, statewide in a red state. Uh, and that would put him in a great place to make a case for president. That's uh, Senator Raphael Warnock in Georgia. Mm -hmm. He's currently running ahead of Herschel Walker at the same time that Stacey Abrams is running behind Brian Kemp. So if Kemp were to win, um, uh, the Republican governor, at the same time that Warnock was able to win, showing that he as a, a Democrat could win in a red state, I think that'd be a huge boost to him. Um, then I think you have some other uh, possible options. You have Roy Cooper, governor of uh, North Carolina. Now, he is a Democrat, uh, a, a white Democrat, um, kind of more uh, not super progressive, kind of more centrist. He would really need uh, a boost from a kingmaker uh, in the same way that James Clyburn really boosted Biden with an endorsement. Uh, Cooper would need something similar. But if he does get something like that, I think he'd become a option for Democrats who uh, don't have their progressive favorite, but feel like they need to find a, a white Democrat that independents would vote for. So he would fit that role. So one of many reasons why Biden's approval ratings have sort of been falling is the fact that he can't get the border under control and it's becoming just a historic crisis. And now cities up north, including Washington, D.C., where we are right now, are starting to feel the pressure from that. Tell us about that and whether you think that could maybe change the calculus for Democrats on, on how they approach border policy. Sure. So you had uh, the D.C.'s mayor, Mayor Bowser, went on Face the Nation and she was asked about complaints her city has been giving to the federal government saying that their homeless shelters are being overfilled with immigrants from the border. Now, in that case, the, the governors of Arizona and Texas are busing immigrants up to D.C. Uh, because their communities are so overrun with, with these migrants. Um, to, put, to put a number on it, um, th these are not just arrests. The Biden administration has caught and then released into the country 1.3 million illegal immigrants since he's, since he's been in power. That is the population larger than nine states and a population double that of the District of Columbia. And then also this week you had Mayor New, uh, uh, Adams of New York say that you know his um, homeless shelters are also being overrun by uh, illegal immigrants. Now he complained that governors were busing them up there, but that's not true, not at all. They're only been being bused by governors here, but the federal government is paying for bus tickets for migrants up to New York, and so that is definitely a problem that more and more communities are running into. Finally, you you amused yourself this week with some unique football names on college rosters, something that I had never, you know, even considered before. Why don't you tell us about some of those names? Okay, I don't know if I'd quite phrase it like that, <laughs> um, but a... Sure, you amused other people, too. A Twitter account <laughs> out there, uh, uh, Jim Weber, who uh, covers college football, mm -hmm. and I've been following him for years. He came out with the 2022 all college name teams. So this is, these are players who obviously they're college football players, so they're good, mm -hmm. um, but the only noteworthiness so far is they have cool names. So like there's a, <coughs> a wide receiver for University of Louisiana Monroe. <coughs> His name is Boogie Knight. Mm. Um, there's also a quarterback <laughs> in Oklahoma. His name is General Booty. Um, then there's a defensive back for the University of Wyoming. His name is Buck Coors. I think it'd be more perfect being if his, if his last name Coors, if he was playing at Colorado with the, the cores being yeah, Colorado. The but Wyoming's right next door, so, so still a cool name. Mm -hmm. But there's also a bumper pool from Alabama, and he made, he made a starters for uh, offense and defense, so there's 22 names on there. I think it'd be fun to check it out. I would love to know what some of those parents were thinking when yeah, they absolutely. chose those names. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Khan. You can get more writing from Khan and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.